guys, today's video is all about getting top marks in your GCSE or IGCSE physics exams. I thought it was really important that I shared my top tips and the best approach really you should, you should really be taking in order to do really, really well because everyone has their own methods and there's an awful lot of people just writing notes for the sake of it, but I want you to use, oh, ow. Hey, that's claws on my new jumpsuit. <sighs> so yeah, there are loads of different approaches you can take, but I wanted to share my particular favorite approach to ensure that fundamentally you do exceptionally well in your exams. So first of all, obviously you need to understand the content that you're learning because if the question is worded slightly differently and you haven't learned it exactly how it's asked, then you're gonna struggle. So first of all, you just need to go through all the topics. And I do have my all-in-one videos, which are always super popular, but they are all-in-one for a reason. So I don't go through everything in the most insane amount of detail because obviously that would take 10 hours, but I do have individual topic videos. So for example, if if you're not so keen on the radioactivity part of the specification or magnetism, go check out my individual topic video on that. So you've gone through everything and you've watched the content and you've made sure you've understood it. Then it comes to actually doing well in the exam. Past exam question practice is so, so key. I know you know this, but try and look at as many different past papers as possible. And it doesn't matter if it's a different specification different exam board. People get so hung up on fonts. Hang on, I don't recognize this font. It's not the one I'm used to. It doesn't matter. If it's about nuclear fission and you need to know about nuclear fission, then answer the questions. Have a real look at the mark schemes. That's essential to doing well. And to this end, because I've bought my iPad Pro, I can now write on the past papers. So I have been very carefully going through past papers, giving my full explanation to show you how to actually approach the question. Physics particularly needs you to be good with the maths element. Lyra, you're disturbing the video. Come here. Why are you so loud? I didn't think you wanted a cuddle. So, you gonna calm down? So the maths element of physics is huge and you need to know some extremely important formulae and some equations. And it is so worth learning these because you won't be able to get the marks in the exam if you haven't learned what order you need to substitute in the values. So my advice is this, learn all the formulae, and I'll show you how to do that on the iPad now and give you some ways of remembering it. And then as soon as you get your paper and they say begin, rather than turning to question one, turn to the back of the paper where there's some blank paper, there always is, or you could even ask for some blank paper and scribble down every single formula triangle that you need to know. So you've learned them, scribble them all down so you have your own personal equation sheet. This might take you a minute, but it will be invaluable when it comes to answering the questions because you'll have it there ready-made and you won't need to be looking around in your brain for the correct equation because I don't know about you, but they get quite scrambled. However, if I can read them, then I know how to use them properly. So that would be my biggest advice with doing well in physics exams. So let's look at how I approach equations then. And I like to use the formula triangle. I used this exact method when I was doing my GCSE, so I'm going to share that now. For remembering the equation which links work done, power, and time, I used to remember we play tennis. W at the top, P at the bottom, and T at the bottom. So we play tennis. That means that if we want to know what work done is, well, we highlight the portion that we're after, and you can see that that is power times time. For power, we highlight the P, and we can see that's work done divided by time. And then lastly, to calculate time, we highlight time and we can see that that's work done divided by power. So a formula triangle is a super quick way of knowing three equations off by heart with very little effort. If they ask you for specific equations, you must give it written out. It doesn't have to be in words, but make sure you're not providing the triangle. They will not accept that. Let's take another one now. I kind of feel embarrassed sharing this, but these are the exact things I used to remember. Vets in rain, 
don't ask me why, that would stand for voltage, current, and resistance. So according to our triangle, we can see that voltage is current times resistance. Notice that current is given by I. Don't write C, it's I, because it stands for intensity of current. To calculate current, we do voltage divided by resistance. To calculate resistance, we do voltage divided by current. Moving on. This sounds rude, sorry, but FAP. F is force. A is area. P is pressure. Therefore, in order to calculate force, you do area times pressure. Area is force divided by pressure. And lastly, pressure is force divided by area. So again, a nice easy way of getting three equations out of it. Next up, one of my tutees taught me this one, drunk men vomit. Now, because they're drunk, the D goes on the bottom for once. Usually it would go at the top. And so D stands for density. M stands for mass. V stands for volume. So therefore density is mass divided by volume. Mass is density times volume. Volume is mass divided by density. Going back to the electricity topic, quit, Q-I-T, Q stands for charge, I stands for current again, T stands for time, so charge is given by current times time, current is given by charge divided by time, time is given by charge divided by current. So again, a nice quick way of getting all those equations out, and I would do that for every single equation you need. And then just to show you what I was actually talking about in terms of on the day when you're actually sitting your exam. So pretend I'm sat here with this paper, I'm about to sit it, and they say, you may begin. So what I would do in your case is obviously you wouldn't scroll, but you're gonna turn to the back. You're gonna go whizzing past all the questions straight away, and you're gonna get to a blank page, here's one, and immediately start scribbling out your triangles. This is honestly exactly what I did for my GCSE. And some need writing out slightly more, but not too much. So that's acceleration equals change in velocity over time. But it's completely up to you how you do it, whatever makes most sense to you. So yeah, I would carry on doing this. It would, as you can see, it's taken me hardly any time at all. So that when I scroll, such as in this question, and I've just got to this one, so state the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. I turn to my handy little formula sheet this is the equation I need. It doesn't matter what way round I give it, but I'm going to write voltage equals current times resistance. Easy. The second thing to be super aware of is units, 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 particularly now with the new IGCSE, new GCSE specifications. They're constantly giving you things in megajoules instead of joules or in milliseconds instead of seconds. And it's so essential that you can convert the units. So make sure you don't ignore that when you're revising. It is so important that you have made a note of how to convert between them and I've made a separate video about converting units so you should go check that out. So yeah, for me, success in physics is all about making sure obviously that you understand the content, that you've practiced as many different past paper questions as possible and don't forget if you're struggling with perfect answers, I have my revision guides for CIE, AQA, Edexcel 9 to 1, Edexcel IGCSE, and they're all available on the website together with previews so you can have a look at the sort of answers I think you should be giving. But yeah, I hope that was helpful. Please, if you take anything away from this video, equations, formulae, so important, so, so important. One extra tip I can give you is when it comes to explaining things like, why does increasing the temperature increase the pressure of a gas? You give your answer, you talk about the fact that the particles have more kinetic energy, 
that they collide more with the walls of the container, exerting a greater force, blah, blah, blah. Don't forget to quote equations where you can. So the equation here you want to quote is pressure equals force over area. There tends to be a mark available for stating the correct equation. The same with momentum. Why do crumple zones decrease the risk to the person in the car? It's all to do with force equals change in momentum over time. So if you state that equation, you will get a mark. How about ca calculating resistance in an electrical circuit? State the equation, resistance equals voltage divided by current, and you will get a mark. I'm about to sneeze because this cat hair is just awful. It's just everywhere, it's going up my nose. So state equations in answers which don't even look like they're asking for an equation where possible, and I'm sure there'll be a mark available. So yeah, off the top of my head, that's everything I can suggest with your physics GCSE, IGCSE. Hope you found it helpful and I'll be back soon with another video.